Uh, the field we're just moving into, though, is uh, direct metal laser sintering, or DMLS. And that's a really very exciting departure, because that means we can make parts in true production materials and uh, some very interesting ones. Well, the DMLS process is very similar to the plastics process on the surface. So in other words, it looks very similar to the plastic process. In reality, though, it is actually really very much more uh, challenging to perform. Whereas with the plastic process, you start off with a plastic powder, which is um, typically on a range between, say, 40 and 90 microns. Um, you then heat the plastic powder up to just below its melting temperature, and the infrared laser scans over the surface and melts the powder in the areas that your CAD model dictates. Uh, with the metal process, the metal powder is not heated up to the same temperature. It's only typically around about 70 centigrade. And you use a very much higher power laser to melt the somewhat smaller powder particles, which are much more accurately graded to around 20 microns and smaller. Um, the very high power laser will then melt the metal in the same way as with the polymer, in the sense that it melts the areas that you specifically want to form into templates, which are then uh, the layers within the model or within the, the functional part with the DMLS. The other core difference with DMLS is that whereas with the polymer process you can stack the parts in three-dimensional space, uh, they don't require any supports, they can just be mounted in or positioned wherever you wish and orientated for the best build uh, characteristics that you're looking for. With the metal process, however, it's a lot more like um, stereolithography uh, in that every metal part casts its own shadow on the base that you're building on. So you don't stack parts on top of each other. The other thing is that because you're talking about a very low viscosity molten metal, um, then clearly you have two problems. One is if you're building any kind of overhang, it has to be supported. And secondly, you've got a massive amount of heat to take out or very high temperature to reduce down to crystallization point. Um, very quickly. So the supports perform two functions with the DMLS process. The first one being as a support and the second one being to take heat away. The, the process has a number of further challenges however and um, indeed it can take up to two years to be considered to be a reasonably competent DMLS uh, user simply because of all the different challenges of uh, heat distortion and uh, how, where to put the, um, the various supports, how to orientate it to affect the surface to least affect, what machining allowances to put on, where to put it, and all that kind of thing. So there, there is a, a, a very much more complex process in order to uh, gain expertise with. And um, certainly, uh, one wouldn't necessarily start from being a polymer SLS manufacturer and going into metal unless you have the right expertise, which is indeed where we stand. We currently have uh, one EOS M270 machine and um, we'll be building up on our capacity in that respect as our um, customer base becomes more experienced and more aware and uh, indeed as the company grows. With regard to the uh, metal side, then um, really things, things are continually changing. Um, with, with the polymers, you're restricted to nylon 12 as the, the base nylon material. And that really can be quite constricting because you uh, don't get very high standard of properties from that. On the other hand, with the metals, it really is a, a very, very different picture. At the bottom end, you start with a bronze type of material, which is a multi-phase melting material um, with just fairly straightforward characteristics. You then move on to a range of different steels. Um, there's a basic tool steel, there's a mar, mar aging steel, 17-4 um, stainless steel. Those are the, the main steels that are available to us. Um, moving on further up the, uh, the tree, though, we've got uh, cobalt chrome, which is a very exciting super alloy that's uh, of uh, tremendous potential to the aerospace industry. And then there are two forms of titanium. There's the pure titanium um, and titanium 6-4, which is uh, both of which are very exciting for medical applications and indeed aerospace.